Welcome to Flashback, episode 21. Now you might be thinking this, if you've been watching this series up to date, this doesn't look right. That's because it's in a different place for a one-off episode. Mm. It's li um, not Liam this time. I was going to call you Liam. It's not Liam. It's Dan. We're doing a one-off Flashback episode because basically having a time to do it with Liam. <laughs> so, but don't worry, after this, it'll be back to me and Liam and back into the usual thing. But we thought we'd throw in an episode 21, one that um, you can relate to arguably more uh, on, on my level I think yeah. like you understand it and we're talking about Thomas Was Alone the Thomas Was Alone is a indie platformer game released in 2012 for major consoles so you could find it in 2020, 2010 as a uh, flash based game but would eventually get an upgrade it's been released on everything if you've um, got a console or a computer you can play Thomas Was Alone it's a game by Mike Bithiel Bithiel can't really so, say his name Bithiel. Mike Bith Bithiel and so on and it's um, it's I think pretty famous in most circles nowadays, whether you know it for its music, gameplay, or narration by Danny Wallace, who would obviously win a BAFTA for his excellent, excellent narration. 
So like all the flashbacks, we are going to talk about things we like, things we don't like, and favourite moments, scenes, bits of music. So, things you like about Thomas Was Alone. And the music, obviously, and the narration, the entire like story it goes through, the progression of like mm-hmm. how it kind of gets harder, where you have to do more stuff. and gets, certainly gets more complex. It does, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's kind of hard to... Like, there's everything. I like the entire game and the yeah. aspects of it, but then there's like, so, like, there's some aspects of those aspects that I don't like. Right, we'll get into that in a bit. We don't get to the don't likes yet. Um, no, I agree with you. This is one where it's like, name me things you like, but Thomas was low, and I'm often to say, well, the game as a whole. Yeah. Um, but if you know, if I have to specify, I'm just saying, no, you must specify certain things. I would say the fact that it turns um, shapes into living, breathing characters. Mm. Uh, they all have names, um, personalities, and those grow throughout the game. I enjoy the difference between each one. I enjoy the puzzle aspects. I quite enjoy, particularly later on, as you say, when it gets tougher, the the working out what we have to do and thinking, oh, yeah, if this person, if this character, this shape does this, it can allow you to do this and so on. Um, I enjoy, I mean, it's it's the game overall. I think it's a decent length in the sense that you don't, it doesn't overstay its welcome. And I love that it's basically been untouched since 2012. They didn't try and do like a sequel. Yep, yeah, no sequels, nothing. No one's ever asking for one. Everyone's just sort of happy with what Thomas was alone delivered, which is now a seven-year-old game, almost eight-year-old game at this stage. It it, it still does hold up. Um, you know, like I said, there's no excuse to not play it. If you're sitting here watching this going, well, I've heard of it, but never played it. Do you have a mobile phone? Get it on that then. Yeah. It plays just as well as it does on a console. If you're watching this on like a computer, your Xbox, your phone, you can play it on all of those. Exactly. So. It's one of the most widely available games out there. And it's important that you do play it because even if perhaps it doesn't have the effect that it had on, has on you that say it did us, I do think you'll, you, people will, you'll, most people will enjoy it. You can't like, dislike it. No, that's the thing. And there are, but there are flaws, which we'll get onto now. Things we maybe don't like as much. Mm-hmm. So I suppose the most obvious one is that it's probably too easy overall. Maybe, yeah. Overall. Although it does have some tricky later puzzles, there's nothing that's really going... There's certainly nothing hair pulling. There's nothing challenging enough to make you like, go, oh, this is really... There's tedious levels where you tedious. Have to do the same thing over and over again, but there aren't challenging ones, which I'd prefer. I agree with you now. Actually, tedious is quite a nice little way to put it, where it is a bit like, okay, it's the same sort of thing here, God damn it, over and over and over again, and so on. Ultimately as well, um, although it's not something I personally dislike, the visual style of the game will put people off, I think. Yeah. Um, if you're not if you're not a platformer fan, like you don't like platforms, you only you would look at screenshots of Thomas was alone and think, nah, I don't want none of that. Mm. You know, and I get that. Yes. Um it's, it's certainly why I didn't play it for a while, because I was not in I'm not interested in two D two D platformers. Mm. Um, so it certainly wasn't for me. Neither. Like, you'd look at it at a base value, you wouldn't know there's the narration, the music, the whole Absolutely. story, the characters, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know what they describe it as, but you can't have done it justice uh, in like, well, a little description box. Well, go check. We did a classic reaction trailer, uh, myself and Lou, and uh, of Thomas Was Alone. And it was the original trailer that was for Thomas Was Alone. Yeah. And uh, it was just like, yeah, that's not that great. Yeah. <laughs> it's simple as that, really. Yeah, um, other things, you know, kind of like is that um, perhaps the last three chapters aren't as strong as the first seven. Yeah. And there's a reason being, oh, I'm, I'm about to go, don't want to spoil it, but this is all spoiler heavy. The reason being is once you kind of get, once Thomas and the gang are gone and you're given all these sort of new characters to play with and so on, it's a bit of a flatter moment. You kind of miss them as well. Mm. Like, oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and don't get me wrong, it is still great yeah. um, and wraps up satisfyingly. There is a bit of an argument. It's like, oh, all that time invested has now been gone out the window to be replaced by people you don't even know. Should it have ended it like the bit? That's, Strong that's argument a for it. Cause... However, if it had done, we would not have got what we got, which is a basically a very frantic finale. We wouldn't have met the jump lot, the yeah. little jump lot, um, Mr. Grey, the evil one, yeah. and the amazing track one specific track that comes near the end of the game or anything else which we'll go into now then favorite moments scenes bits of music and we're talking about it now uh the track freedom it's the last mm. one on the thomas was alone album and it's the one that effectively plays during the last moments particularly when you're tr- chasing down mr gray and it's that's just like that's the thomas was alone shit that i'm like that's what makes yeah. it you know um as well as inertia that particular piece of music that plays yeah <laughs> Thank you. 
Basically, musical-wise, you can't praise it enough. No, you can't. Um, yeah. The composer, David Helsden. Yes. Did a fantastic job. Unbelievably brilliant, yeah. So, um, yeah. Do you have my favourite moment? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, so it's when you kind of realise what you have to do. Yeah. And you have to literally line them all up one by one and get them ready for it. And you make that last jump with the last one, they all just disappear and you never see them again. Yep. It's like, that sucks. <laughs> I remember, I, re- I was stuck, I remember when I realised what I was doing, mm. and I was in this room, I was sitting over there, and I had to put my controller down and walk away before I did it, because I couldn't believe uh, that's what I was going to have to do. Um, yeah, I, I, it's, it's one of the most profoundly impactful moments. And o- another thing, you've got to sort of say, favourite moments of things, and this kind of applies overall, kind of to the game as a whole, but we talked about it at the start, which is um, enough can't be said about Danny Wallace's narration. Mm. Um, his cadence, his tone, his voice, his excitement, his wonder. Yeah. Um, if you know the scene, the the Danny Wallace bit narration where he talks about Thomas being uploaded to the internet yeah. for a certain segment of time. He speeds um, off a bit. He's like, oh, it's exciting. He's trying to, name, he's trying to like, name everything he things, saw. You yeah. know, something about a cake, and it's yeah. just um, it's a like cake being light. Trying to, yeah, <laughs> and it's just that captures. The excitable Thomas, more than anything else, mm-hmm. um, absolutely wonderful, wonderful, wonderful job. Whatever reason why it's simply um, one of the best games ever made. Thomas was connected to the internet for 12 seconds, and he had seen everything. He'd seen the cat who couldn't spell, he'd heard of the arrow through the knee. He felt there was probably a thing called cake, but that it was a lie. You kind of get that wonder about Thomas as well, like, what is he... He's just kind of a, he's like an AI, I guess, but you don't really find out much about him. No, you don't. You, you find just find out more about the other characters. You're true. Thomas is just seen as a more of a wonderful. I mean, the best, one of the best sick moments is um, involving Chris when Chris is uh, being well. When Daniel was talking about how he gets annoyed by Thomas, yeah. and he took references how Thomas makes this quiet little um, satisfied noise every time he sees something new. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, that, I could imagine that. But when somebody really constantly goes, mm. ooh, mm. or ooh. And stuff like that. And just being like, shut yeah. the fuck up, you know? <laughs> yeah. And and there we go again. We'll wrap it up then with that, Chris. Mm. Um, He's a great character. And the fact what that an he arc. progresses, mm. like, the character arc on Chris. This little orange cube <laughs> has a better character arc than most video game like characters today. Yeah. So... They've done a fantastic job, clearly. Yeah, he's all that like he's that angry little orange cube, and then he like falls in love with Laura, and it's it's, it's great. Yeah, you can't really knock them for that. Yeah, there you go. I think Dan summed it up perfectly for the ending. Thank you very much for watching. Check out the other videos of episodes of Flashbacks. Liam will be back next time, and we'll um, hit the like and subscribe button.